Welcome back to P2 Arrow. It sure has been a while, and I'll get into some of the reasons why here in a bit. But for now, let's dig straight into turning some raw material into something usable that didn't exist before. What you're looking at here is an automotive heater bypass valve, and since my engine is water cooled, I'll be using it to regulate the hot engine coolant flow through or around this heater core up under the dash of my airplane. The plan is to actuate this valve using a standard push-pull cable, kind of similar to what you've seen on a parking brake or NACA vent valve in tons of airplanes out there. I had some aluminum round bars, so that's what I plan to use to make this little part I'm after. I searched and searched for a part that I could just buy without any luck. Most automotive installations simply bend the control rod around the post and leave it at that. And I'm sure that would probably be suitable for this installation as well, but I feel like we can do better than that. Like any other machining project, I always start with truing up my stock in order to get good square reference surfaces to index off of with the vise. And for this I use a trick that you've seen me use many times before, and that's tricking my vertical mill into thinking that it's a lathe. Chuck the workpiece up in the mill and mount a carbide cutter in the vise and away you go. Now I'll admit that it's probably overkill for this part, but it's just a standard practice and habit for me. I'm shooting for a part that I can secure to the end of the control cable and it'll swivel around the rod end actuating that valve. Alright, so I mentioned delays and well here it is. Pretty much like the rest of the world, shipping delays, back orders, and budget have hit the Project 2 shop just like every other household out there. 
I'm at a point in the build where the next purchases are pretty hefty, and it's taken a little extra time to ramp up on the side hustles and gain the needed capital to keep it moving forward. I've slowly been gathering little stuff that I need for small jobs like this one, but the next big step is getting some Dynon parts in that instrument panel and working out the integration between the ECU and the HDX screens in order to display all the engine data on the screen. I'm happy to announce that I do in fact have all that on order, but there is some delay for a few of those parts so bear with me as I try and wait patiently. Additionally, I ordered a prop from NR, but being located in the Ukraine, I'm simply hopeful that I'll ever even get to see it. But fingers crossed that the bullies to the east will ease up and things can get back to normal for them. So I've skipped ahead here a bit, but really it's more of the same, just whittling away at this little guy to get it into a shape that not only looks kind of cool, but serves its intended purpose. This should work well up under the dash, and we'll get to that here a little bit later in the build, once I actually start installing the heater core. Thanks for stopping by and watching this little update, even though it's not very significant at the moment. There is more exciting updates in the works, coming real soon so stay tuned and be sure to let me know what you're thinking in the comments section below.